Welcome back, it's the Game Changer. And today, I'm excited about this transformation or this haircut. We're doing a drop fade and we're keeping the top. The reason why I'm excited about that is because this cut can give a lot of people trouble. I know at the early part of my career, about 10 years ago, I kind of had trouble with it. Um, not so much the fade itself, but transitioning such a longer layer to a short layer. It's the gradual change. Um, he's keeping the top. Um, so even though his fro isn't as big on top or his hair isn't as long, this pertains to any amount of lip on top. It's a lot of debulking, um, a lot of patience, and a lot of precision. But it takes time. You, you, I'm going to be showing some, some guys some tips on how to really conquer this cut. So like I said, it's the drop fade. Um, first thing we're doing, we, we're actually putting the primary line in. Very important on this cut, since he get, is getting a drop and he doesn't want too high, we start very low. Very important that we keep it low because we don't have, what makes this cut troublesome to start with is that you don't have a large amount of space to make this fade look smooth. And with the hair being so long on top, especially in early cur over curly hair, it can be difficult because you don't want it to look choppy. If you go too high up on the fade, you want to create another bulky spot. So it's very important that we keep that primary line as low as possible. Um, so it's just, technique is very important. Um, if you if you master the technique, hand placements, so, and, and again, so we're just doing the same thing on this side. Very important, hand placements, keep it low. And then what you can do is, so you wanna make sure the fade is even or symmetrical on both sides. As you can see, I'm gonna lean to the front in a second, just so I can kind of survey both sides to see if they're as even as possible. It's always good to get a front view look um, because you might think it's even until you step in front of the cut and then you see, okay, I'm a little off. So and when you're off, a little adjustments. I'm about to step in front right now so you guys can check that out. Let's see. Right now I'm just getting that line. I love, so for me, first thing, see, so I just check it, boom. Okay, see my touch up each side. So for me, it's very important. I like hard lines. The reason why, um, I love a really neat workspace. I know some guys don't put hard lines, which is cool because it's easier to get those out. But again, it's not too bad to get these out because whatever you put the line in with, you can take it out with. So it just gives it a nice flush look all the way around. So now I'm creating my secondary line. Secondary line combines two parts. Um, the primary line combines the skin with the hair itself. So what I'm doing is, so as you can see with my left hand, I'm using my thumb to kind of stretch the skin. Remember, we don't have a big, a large workspace, especially since his hair is so long on top. So I want to stretch and create a wider workspace. I'm using my Andy's Masters here to create the secondary line. All right, so the reason why I usually always use the secondary method or secondary line method or the two line method, it's just like when you build a house, you always have a blueprint first or you have a layout. You never just start laying brick or putting up a structure. It's always good to have that um, outline. Our outline is very neat, you want me to tell you why? So I know that the first thing I'm gonna do is after I make the secondary line is I'm gonna blend that first section, boom. I'm not gonna fade it out, I'm just gonna blend the skin with the secondary line or with the secondary, ex the light area. Then I'll come back, debulk. I have steps. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Especially with a haircut like this, the reason why steps are important is because you can easily get lost and frustrated. The neater your workspace, the less frustration you cause for yourself, all right? So after I get the secondary line in, I'll come back with my Babos FX. Good clipper, very strong motor. A little loud, but it's a, good, it's a great clipper, actually. So. Now, very important, so you can see with my left hand, I'm stretching with my thumb, I'm extending my workspace because I know I have a very small window to make this work. Now, with the FX, what I do, I have the blade all the way closed at first, but it's very important. So with this fade technique, right, of course I'm gonna adjust the lever, but primarily it's gonna be closed to get that line out. It's very important to have a very light stroke with the clipper. Why? The firmer you press on the skin, you press the clipper on the skin, the more hair you'll take off per stroke. and I want to take my time. I want to make actually blend this section in, not take this line away. Very important. I don't want to take this section away. I want to blend it in. So the so a lighter stroke helps me take the hair off slowly and gradually, so I can watch as I work. Um, I have my thumb on the top of the clipper. It gives me better control. It's a good technique. And it just, as you can see, most of my fingers are loose. I'm not fighting or wrestling or choking the clipper. I'm letting the clipper work. Very strong blade, so I don't have to be firm. Um, now I'm doing a reverse grip, like a tiger claw grip. Tiger claw grip. It helps also get that line away. So once I get this line primarily in, I'll come back do some touch up work later. But I just want to get a primary line in so that I can get the fade in, right? I want to primarily get that line in, not the primary line. All right. So comb. 
as you can notice during this fade, I won't use a brush. Um, I never really use a brush. I haven't been using brushes in my face for a while. A comb helps space the hair out while a brush clumps the hair together. That will be detrimental on this fade because with the hair being so thick, it'll give, it'll be a debacle. So very important to use the comb for spacing. It lays the hair where it needs to go. Now I'm coming at back with my babbleless, um edges to, to just see I'm notching. I'm notch hitting using the corner of that blade to just, you know, knock out the rest of that line. Now, this is very important. I'm going to be doing a lot of debulking in this cut, as you probably would understand, because it's so thick, right? The hardest thing is this um, prime, uh, this secondary line. Getting the secondary section squared away is usually the most difficult part for barbers because there's so much hair, and you want a nice transition. It's very hard to transition this cut without a line. But see, first, I debulk with the, with the grain of the hair, which way the hair grows, just so I can thin the hair out primarily. Right, get, get my primary section of debulking. Now I'm going against the grain because I took away a lot of that excess hair. Very light again. See my thumb is on top, fingers are loose as I fade and I comb um, because I don't want to take off too much hair. The lighter your hand position, usually the lighter you are with the clipper. All right, so comb every few strokes because with the hair being so long, what happens is it wants to curl and run away. Okay, so it's also very important to realize what we're doing when we're debulking. We're not fading, we're not blending, we're literally just debulking because that's very essential or vital to the next step of actually fading or blending these two seconds together. So I don't want you to debulk in the hopes of kind of fading because what happens is when you, when you think that way, you start to debulk too high and you put yourself in a greater situation later that could be irreversible depending on the desired look of the cut. So as you can see, I'm just finding the thick spots. I'm debulking it. I'm making it nice and smooth. So you guys watch, and I'll be back soon. All right, so if you rewind the video, you'll see that there's a big difference between um, before I debulk with the one and a half and after. Now I'm gonna actually debulk in a sense with my one on my magic clip. Um, this is debulking and to kind of fade at the same time. I'm gonna debulk with this one, then come back with my master's no blade and actually blend these two sections together. But right now, a step by step, I start with a bigger guard then a smaller guard. Remember, these steps I wouldn't say are necessary, but I, it's a Man, almost a 99.9% .9 guarantee rate that if you take your time and use these steps as far as bigger guard, smaller guard, and go by your progressions, that you will not only make your job easier, stress less, but it'll also make that fade that much better. I pretty much guarantee it, all right? Don't want a 100% guarantee it, but I dang near 99% guarantee it. All right, it's because the lighter the workspace, I said all the time, the lighter the workspace, the easier it is to fade. All right, and I'm still stretching from the top and the bottom. The reason why I stretch also is because the tighter that skin is, right, the easier it is for my clippers to do their job, which is to fade. Looser skin kind of moves with the blade, but when you have tighter skin, the skin doesn't move and you can focus directly on the hair. All right, so I'm about to continue to debulk with this one, then I'll come back with my master's no guard and we'll pick up from there. That was a little sooner than I thought, but as you can see, look at the difference between debulking with that one. Now, can you imagine how easy it is, um, an easier job that my masters will have now? I've been literally just working. Imagine trying to fade that down without debulking. It just would have been ridiculous. It would have took too much time, too much notch hitting. This is simpler, okay? So debulk through the steps. Sometimes two, then one and a half, then one, or one and a half, then one. You know what I'm saying? Just you determine which steps you need to take which progression of guards but if you use that method it makes it easier so now what i'm just going to do is very lightly see a light handed thumb on top uh three fingers on the bottom uh four my pinky somewhere around there and i just take my time i stretch the skin so my, my clippers can do their job and we just fade now all right reverse tiger claw method hit little spots you guys watch me take care of this if i see anything that i need to talk about then i'll be back but simple well, back to debulking, now we're working on the back. Now, one thing I do want to show you, I'm going to point to it eventually, but 
this is the occipital bone area. And I literally, I wanna keep the majority of the bulk of that fade below that, especially with this type of cut, because I don't wanna give it a different look. I, I continue, I wanna make sure I give it the drop look, right? So I keep it below that bone. I'll point that bone out in a second so you guys can see where it is. But yeah, it's just simple. Same progressions, same technique. You guys watch and I'll be back soon. All right, so after get the fade in there primarily, I can come back later and do some touch-ups after I get done. Now it's time for the edge up. It's always a little difficult edging these type of cuts up because the hair on the front curls away, it stands up. So what I wanna do is do a tiger claw method, which is a form of debulking. I wanna debulk his edge up. I wanna find the thin spots. I wanna find where it grows unevenly at and where I'm gonna edge up because I don't wanna push it back. You see he has a thin spot right there in the corner but I don't wanna to dig too far into it, right? So I'll thin the area out, make sure the fade is nice and flush, then we can edge from there. But I just wanna work my areas. It's all, again, just like I make a blueprint for the fade, same thing with the edge up, right? See, right here, Tiger Claw, boom, just hitting the edges so that way it can lay down, probably come back with some type of holding spray, and then I'll just, so instead of me using my razor this time, first I'll use the edges. I stretch the skin with the bottom of my thumb, and I, he has a widow's peak right there, so I'll take that off and I just keep everything else nice and natural. I look at both sides so I can line them up later for some symmetry, and then I just edge, you guys. Pull with the thumb to give myself a tight workspace so the skin doesn't move. Just edge, use the comb, boom, hit the, use the corner of the blade right there, and I'm trying to wait to get to the side seats now. Don't wanna to push too far back, keep it nice and natural so it can grow back. When, when you push the edge up back, it grows back funny. So I don't want you guys, you know, taking that method, don't push back, keep it nice and natural, just stretch the skin, because once you edge it up, even those light spots will start to look dark. 
It's the illusion of a crisp. That's the illusion of a crispy edge up, right? Everything's look nice and neat. Um, just take your time, stretch the skin. I'll come back and show you some blade work to knock those. So when I do the holding spray, right? Use, use a fresh blade, a fresh blade every time, and just take away that little stubble. It, you will be surprised at what razor work does for um the neatness or the cleanness of an edge up. Are right, you guys watching? I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so for a quick note, remember, it's if you want to get a nice symmetrical look on both sides of the edge up, a tip you can stand in front of the cut to kind of just glance at it and look as you work. Also, very important, just because, so he has some thin spots on the right side of his edge up. I started on the left side. I don't have to push back to get a nice, neat look. I think sometimes, you, if, if, without that knowledge, see, I'm not digging deep in there, right? It's going to look good even when it's thin because the edge up, once I edge those hairs up, it's not going to be a definable difference. So don't think that you have to push the edge up back because the client has thinner spots. My advice, I'm not really big on the pushback um, because the grow back is so ugly. It's hideous. All right. So good technique compensates for a lack of hair. Not always, though, but in some situations. And I just come back with razor work. You guys stick around. Now, it's always good after you get the fade in there to go back and do detail work. Now, I'm going to, you're going to see me do some detailing. Last step of this fade is to actually shape it up. I still have to shape it. I'm going to hit some of these darker spots. I don't like that. I'll have to clean it up. Then, the shape up is very, very important. So, you guys stick around, watch me do the shape up. I'll have the before and after. At the very end of the video, um, I have um, clips from. I don't know if you guys checked out my new series, Game Changing Conversations and Cuts. Um, we wrapping up season one, so I have a season one finale with all the barbers from the first season. If you haven't seen it, go check it up. Check it out. There's a tab in my um, playlist. Very dope series, so stick around for the trailer for that um, uh, get-together. But see, hitting the ends, knocking it out, shaping it up. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, stick around to the end. Hope you enjoyed the show or the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Take care. I'm not against the hair. A lot of people say, I, I had a client say to me, huh? Do you? So you don't use the hair? I, like I haven't used them. Like, <laughs> you don't believe? No. No, no. I, I'm not gonna say I never have. Like I, I do. I but you put this way, bro. Yeah, but I put this way. I haven't posted a cut with an enhancer since about a year or two. I, I put that on my kids. Bro, that, that ball fade was enhanced. Which one? Dark, show me right now. Pull it up. My phone did. On my kids, I haven't posted a ball fade. It's been enhanced two years. Any cut. What I got to lie for? I didn't say you lie. You did say I'm lying. You take me to the wall. Okay. You put on your kids, man. You good. You ain't got to say I just hope you're right, man. Because you put it on them. I'm not, bro. I would know. I believe you. Because I don't, I I, I believe you. I don't have a reason not to believe you. You say what? You say what? Oh, God, I don't mean. No, bro. I ain't going to let. Matter of fact. Matter of fact.